Hi everyone. I have a special guest with me today who is joining us from from perhaps the most developed uh, country. Uh, thank you, Dilip. Thank you, Dilip, for for being with us and and interacting with us. Dilip Dan joins us from US, of course, um, and Dilip also is a is an expert in technology and and has been very vocal on on artificial intelligence, especially the conversational as artificial conversational AI as it. Better known as Philip. A uh, lot, lot, lot of conversations at the moment about about AI and its impact on developer ecosystem, both positive and negative, and and especially lot of lot of conversations around conversational AI. I would request you to quickly introduce yourself and and if you could, from your perspective, give us a sense of what is conversational AI. And and how 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 is it working? How how will it impact us? What you see? Thank you, uh, Rohit, for having me today. It's been it's a pleasure talking uh, with you all about a topic that's been dear, close to my heart for quite a long time. I did my masters in expert systems, and that's what it was still called. So, been following this artificial intelligence space since then for the last thirty years. I've seen it transition and grow and mature into what has become today. And it's exciting times now where AI has really become mainstream from why because, right? Uh, and AI, as we speak, has generally been defined as the ability for a computer system to be able to ingest different set of structured and unstructured data and provide insights and visible solutions to different business problems that previously used to require a lot more manual interactions or human skills. So the evolution of AI has been very interesting over the last few years. As we as New technologies, everything from heuristics to neural networks to uh, sort of large language models that we talk about today. As things have evolved, really, the ability of what these systems can do has grown exponentially. And we're going to see a lot of different sort of new use cases, new ways of doing things and new skill sets for all of us to evolve into and really grow our careers. It's an exciting time in this space. So let me take a step back and just uh, think, talk a little bit about AI as a whole, as well as what conversational AI within that uh, framework means. As I said, uh, AI is a computer system that takes in a lot of different sets of data it also then has a bunch of different heuristics uh, that is meant to be representative of different things around uh, small decisions or small if, if inferences from different data points that then collectively get put together to form a larger insight. And this is where you hear often hear terms like deep learning and uh, sort of different mod, uh, machine learning models that uh, we've been talking about for quite a while now. All of these are different algorithms, if you will, to uh, sort of help the computer system learn on what the problem space is and then provide some meaningful insights on it. Now, when we take conversational AI, conversational AI is a smaller component of the overall AI ecosystem. And it focuses very much on the conversation between a human and a bot, or between two humans, like what we're doing today. And understanding the day of conversation that's happening, identifying the key intents within that space, and then taking action from that. And that's what, in general, conversation AI is all about. How do you then interpret the speech, translate the 
context of that speech into smaller uh, what they call intents and entities and then from there decipher that intent and take appropriate action while while you quickly touched upon it my my simple for a for a larger audience space i wanted to understand from from a leader like you what is the difference between a so called normal ai or an artificial intelligence versus the conversational ai because if you were to look at on internet there are a lot of these uh, highly researched articles mm-hmm. but but to understand it in a very layman's language it could help yeah. you so ai is a space is a huge space if you think about it uh, ai is used in obviously as we talked about briefly on conversational ai but then it's also used for image recognition ai is also used in our cars these days for our navigation and for self driving cars that that's why others are sort of putting out as well as things like in enterprises where they are being used for decision making for getting you a mortgage or a loan or to provide you personalized services on based on your interests and tastes all of these different use cases leverage ai in different ways so uh, conversational ai as i said is just one of those use cases where really the uh, task on conversational ai is all around taking the what a human being is saying in normal language like you and i are talking about right now understanding that understanding the context identifying what the human is saying so that the computer system can mm-hmm. interpret it identify the different tasks mm-hmm. that the human is asking it to do and from there figure out what action does the system need to do so i'll give you an example let's say you are on a e-commerce website and you are asking a chatbot for where is my order now when you ask the chatbot for where is my order it first needs to understand who you are so it needs to be able to identify you as a customer within the system it needs to then identify the order that you have placed with the uh, e-commerce site and from there track and figure out where that order is and present bring that results back to you and present it to you in a simple easily understandable way that you can understand what to tell you where the order is it's going to be delivered to you next mm, tomorrow at 3 pm or it's been delayed and it's going to come in at 5 pm instead of 3 pm so all of these steps that the computer system needs to take everything from starting to understand what you're saying either in textual form or through speech is what conversational ai is a big part of conversational ai in that is a uh, na- uh, natural language understanding or nlu that's a common term that you hear of course basically a uh, interpreting the simple sentences that you and i sort of understand very easily very quickly without having to under, uh, interpret it or read up look up a dictionary or what it means uh, nlu is a simulation of our brain in understanding speech and translating it into simple uh, text so i'll pause there and see uh, what other questions you have for me are there examples that you could give us you you mentioned e-commerce website but for an example uh, i can't i cannot think of any any uh, live example especially in indian ecosystem which which perhaps is using conversational ai to the mm-hmm. to the manner you mentioned are there are there any global indian examples that you would know and mm-hmm. so the other examples you could think of is also let's say uh, your uh, reliance geo as a big telecom company when you try to contact customer service there and asking about your bill on uh, how much you have outstanding balance on your bill or how much minutes you have or what channels can you subscribe to all of those can be handled through a chatbot 
or a voice bot that does essentially leverage conversational AI to help uh, answer your questions. The other very good example is also in case of insurance. If you're looking to get a insurance or even if you're trying to file a claim, say you are uh, for your health insurance or for your uh, car or automobile or home insurance, you could look at how you can help the customer file that claim faster through conversational way. So these are just some examples of where really conversational AI can play very effectively. But typically, uh, so so again for layman's understanding, typically mm -hmm. uh, when we book tickets on IRCTC, those are those yeah. are chat bots, right? Those are no. not. Yeah. yeah. So the chat, the so what chat bots, if you think about it, has gone through a several set of iterations. The first iteration of a chat bot was basically a static FAQ or frequently asked question. Right, you ask uh, when is uh, what is the charge for uh, delivery, or where, what are the store hours, or where can I find the nearest store to me? All those are static sort of questions that uh, used to be able to answer. Over time, it evolved into what I call task-based activities or task-based chatbot. So, like booking a ticket through chatbot or uh, booking uh, or making a claim through chatbot. Now, these are still, if you think about it, discrete tasks, meaning you do that, you're done, you're starting the next set of tasks. The chatbot doesn't really know you well enough to say, hey, okay, you just booked a ticket, so maybe now you need a hotel or a street, or you have some other things uh, on your preferences in which hotels you want, right? So all of that, that iteration of chatbot couldn't understand. So it was every discrete task and it was up to you to tell the, the chatbot what to do next. Now with the advances with conversational AI, uh, what we're seeing is that intelligence getting built into the chatbot. So now a chatbot can, once you, they identify you, know your personalized preferences, they know what you like, what you don't like, what hotel preferences you might have and so take you through that entire journey of booking not just the ticket but your entire uh, sort of uh, uh, trip with for you and have a customized itinerary built for you right so that's that's what conversational ai is doing for chatbots right yeah i can now relate with to yeah so i could especially in indian context buy an insurance buy a Open air, Mac yeah. FD, we are we are just yeah you know voice messaging and and interacting right. with the bank. So then take it a step further. Is that okay? You did that in to bought the insurance today, but you're not going to file a claim today. But let's say a year from now you have a claim that you need to file. When you go back to the chatbot, the chatbot knows that you have bought that insurance a year ago. What type of policy you apply for? And so it has all of that access to all of that data about you that uh, that it can then quickly leverage to help you file your insurance. Well. You know, uh, uh, now that you're here and, and, and entire internet, the social media is a buzz about how, it, and, in, and especially in Indian context again, how AI would, would essentially eat into developer jobs, etc. Do you think from your experience learning perspective that, that essentially the developer jobs are in danger because AI would pick up uh, the, the the real menial jobs that, that these some of the developers do? And and should should the fear should uh, or amongst the developer ecosystem be so so uh, true that that uh, and and if it is so, if the fear is, is is true, what should they be doing from here on? So what AI, and especially when we talk about AI and eating, uh, taking over developer tasks, what we're specifically talking about is the generative AI part of it, which is leveraging the large language models and access to the articles and uh, information on the internet to build out uh, some new sort of uh, 
be it code or be it uh, uh, say article or be it a new image or a video. Uh, so all of that will still require us developers to do the development behind the scenes to help build out those models and help build out those uh, in systems that can build some of it. So where I see this happening for developers is that the type of skills that they need and what they're doing will change. So to your point, um, the low level menial task of just writing standard code to say what they call CRUD or create, uh, review, you update and delete. That already, to a large extent, a lot of those systems before even AI could automate, right? Uh, think about Ruby and Rails and uh, some of the other systems that uh, have that capability built into it. Where I feel the developers need to really focus on is building a bigger, a more complex solution. How do you build things like uh, sort of uh, solving the issue around, uh, say, insurance claim? Or how do you build a solution for new types of uh, industries and models that we've not yet thought about, right? So the, where I see is the developers will have to climb up what I call a value chain. So far, they've been working at the bottom pyramid, if you will, of the pyramid, if you will, to deal with menial tasks, to really excel in their roles and to really differentiate themselves. They'll have to climb up that ladder and sort of build, uh, provide differentiated value to their customers and employers so that they can be still employed and be working with them. Now, there are some new types of development work that we will see that will require new skills. Uh, some of the things that are coming up and you might have, I'm sure you've, you've heard about is uh, something called machine learning ops or ML ops, which talks about how do you manage and deploy new sort of machine learning models into a system. That is a new set, set of skill sets which today is limited and st is still developing. But I think there's another whole different set of skill sets that comes with all of this. First is uh, obviously data uh, related, all related to data, sort of cleansing, governance, data mining, all of that, so that you're building a true sort of what I call a data refinery within your company to help keep that data clean and uh, enriched and so that you can then build AI solutions on top of it to leverage that data, right? So that's some of the new skills that we're seeing. The other thing, thing we're seeing is with conversational AIs, you need something called conversation designers, which actually design how the system needs to interact with the customer to find out the intent and find out what questions the customer is asking and understand that better and walk the customer through offer. Similarly, you'll also need things like uh, sort of uh, analytics and, and next level sort of understanding of building these models. So there are different skill sets that we are now starting to see evolve, and that's what the uh, developer will have to uh, acquire skills on. Uh, since you mentioned skills, um, how and and we've seen uh, how uh, education uh, educational institutes typically operate. Uh, what change do you foresee now, especially in the educational ecosystem that needs to happen to to inculcate whatever the habits of 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 in this, this emerging uh, tech and the way this emerging tech is, is is shaping up in a new. I mean, it, it's taking a new dimension every six months, every one year. How how do you um, how do we keep a track of skills in, in the academic institutions itself? Yeah. So where I see things changing is, I think the days of where we used to take years to acquire a knowledge that long. I, and I'm distinguishing between knowledge and skill, right? Knowledge is what you need foundationally to build a skill. Now, that's what we used to do in traditional college systems where you would spend four years, five years, six years get acquiring the knowledge about that particular field of study. That time frame, as we've learned, is becoming much shorter. 
And with the other thing is with the uh, with our reliance on things like artificial intelligence and computer system, we don't need to store all of that knowledge in our brains or upfront to sort of develop that skill. So what I see happening from an education perspective is education institutions sort of reducing the time that it takes for a, a student to get uh, acquire that knowledge or providing just the basic level of knowledge so that and teaching them how to gain more knowledge as they go. The second piece that I see happening is uh, micro courses or very specific skill based course that you take for six, eight weeks to learn a particular skill. And then, of course, where you need is regular reinforcement and upskilling of that skill to build that solution so that you are learning new skill, applying it in the field. Uh, and evolving with it and then coming back to the education system, institution to refresh or learn additional skills. So those are the, some of the changes I see happening in this space. My, my last question, uh, again, uh, you're, you're an expert and, and what, are the, what are the key trends that you foresee in an, in an AI world that will have a genuine impact on the way you know we live or we go about our work or or our lives if you were to kind of get that one or two right the big trends i see is that a lot of our day-to-day -day sort of tasks that we used to spend hours and hours doing so sort of just data updates data communication like anything to do with filling out a spreadsheet or filling out a, a PowerPoint to communicate statuses, to communicate information. A lot of those sort of low level tasks are going to get automated and we'll start leveraging AI to help us. With. The, where we see the trend shifting is that we are all going to have more time to do creative things and think a little bit more about other aspects of our work to make it to enrich both what we do to for our that brings us joy and sort of fulfillment but also what we do to help the company and the community as a well. lot i think uh, we you see that a lot of these new capabilities new skill sets are going to be towards how do we make our lives more fulfilling fulfilling and re, re uh, enriched rather than towards doing the mundane same day-to-day -day job just to fulfill, to get a page right so that's that's the high level trends that i see i know it's a more of a abstract trend but where i see this is what what is the technology being used for right i i don't buy into the fact that ai is going to take over our lives that is uh somebody's sort of pipe dream and uh, scare mongering if you will I think where you have to be really thinking about is how can we leverage AI as a tool to make our, our lives more enriching and well that's a pretty you know a strong uh statement that you don't buy in that AI would would drastically change the the way uh, the developer ecosystem and and the work would happen and and on that note thank you Dilip for talking to us I, you know, uh, look forward to interact with you more often than this and, and especially now deep dive into various aspects of artificial intelligence and, and, and other machine learning, uh, especially the ML ops that you quickly spoke about. Thank you for having me, Rohit, and I uh, really you. enjoyed our conversation. Looking forward to the next one. Take care.